Thank you, Eden. So today I'm going to talk about moving manure of a monitored premises in a control area during a highly pathogenic avian influenza outbreak. So majority of manure from egg layer operations is land applied to fields as a fertilizer. In a hypothea outbreak, known infected premises would be depopulated and a control area would be established around the infected premises with movement restrictions for premises in the control area. However, there might be premises in the control area that are uninfected and movement of products and byproducts from those premises is critical for continuity of business. The figure on the right shows an example control area. Particularly for some of the egg layer operations using manure belt systems, they might have limited storage capacity on site and therefore movement of manure is critical to continue operations. Movement and land application of manure, however, is a known risk factor for hypath AI and has been implicated as a transmission mechanism in several past outbreaks, such as in Mexico and Pennsylvania. We evaluated active surveillance and sequestration as mitigations for movement of manure of egg layer farms with manure belt systems. Here, sequestration refer refers to removal of manure from the house to a secure storage site without addition of or contact with fresh manure. One of the main mitigations is targeted active surveillance for Hypath AI. Here, targeted active surveillance uh, refers to prioritizing dead and sick chickens for testing. This significantly improves detection relative to random sampling of birds in a house. We considered protocols based on daily dead bird testing at the barn level, specifically sampling FI or Levin swab pool sample for every 50 dead birds in a barn. And also we are testing all barns that contributed manure to the sequestration storage pile. The figure on the right shows the uh, active surveillance process. So here a phi or 11 swab pool sample is taken from the daily mortality on a day, which can include the birds that died due to hypothyroid disease, as well as birds that died due to uh, other routine production causes. And once a pool sample is taken, that's tested through Influenza A matrix gene RRT-PCR test. In cage layer houses with manure belts, the manure drops onto a conveyor belt and it's moved to the end of the house every one to three days. Manure is then moved out of the building and it may be directly land applied or it may be moved to on-site or off-farm storage. In some cases, manure may also be heat treated or composted. We don't focus on the heat treated or composted manure in this analysis, though it's included as part of the overall risk assessment. Here we show the, an example timeline to illustrate the benefit of a sequestration holding period. So if a house is exposed to hypothea virus, then the number of uh, disease and uh, infectious and dead birds increases exponentially over time. And if in this example, the time of detection is Friday, without any sequestration, manure removed from the house on Thursday before detection, which has a higher contamination risk, could inadvertently be moved to the field. However, if you have a seven day sequestration period, then only manure removed a week prior, which has a much lower chance of hypothea contamination could potentially be moved detection. So this illustrates how the holding time period can reduce the likelihood of moving contaminated manure off the premises. So we now give a very short overview of our modeling methods. We use a stochastic disease transmission model 
to simulate how hypothalamus spreads within a layer burn. The model predicts the number of birds in various disease stages, such as susceptible, latent, infectious, and dead birds over time. We use an individual-based model that enables flexible uh, disease state duration inputs, such as the bird level latent period and the bird level infectious period and time to death. The model parameters are uh, estimated through uh, experimental data working in collaboration with Southeast Poultry. On the right, we have an example simulation output from our transmission model that shows the number of dead and infectious birds in a 100,000 bird layer barn on various days post exposure. Here we can see that uh, there's a quite a bit of variability. Um, so it is important to use a stochastic model. Adequate contact rate is a key parameter that impacts the rate of within flock or within barn disease transmission. An intuitive way to think about adequate contact rate is if you place an infectious bird among susceptible birds, it's the number of birds that become infected by unit time. During the 2015 Hypothea outbreak, some pullet flocks had mortality and test result patterns that indicated very slow spread. So we decided to include a slow spread scenario in our analysis. However, available data from the 2022 outbreak did not indicate slow spread in layers so far, and therefore this might be lesser of a concern in the current outbreak. So we evaluated two adequate contact rate scenarios, that is uniform one to five birds under the typical spread scenario and uniform 0.27 to 0.5 birds per day under the slow spread scenario. We predicted the amount of hypothea virus in an 8,000 kg manure load that could be moved before detection from a 100,000 bird layer house. We considered various factors such as the time to detection and sequestration holding time, the hypothea virus concentration in feces from infectious hens. Uh, we used a value of 10 to the power of 7 EID 50 per gram and the number of infectious birds from the transmission model output. We conservatively assumed daily removal of belts via uh, removal of manure through the belts. And we evaluated various sequestration uh, periods starting from no sequestration, that is zero, to a 10-day sequestration. We have an article on this analysis published in Avian Diseases. This slide shows the results on the percent of model runs where hypothea virus contaminated manure was moved off the premises before detection for various sequestration holding time. So here we can see that without any sequestration, that is zero day sequestration, there's a very high likelihood of moving contaminated manure before detection. So it's 99% in all of the scenarios that we evaluated. However, the likelihood of moving contaminated manure of the premises decreased substantially as you increase the sequestration period. For example, under the typical spread scenario and when using a pool sample size of 11, the likelihood of moving contaminated manure decreased from 99 to 1% as the sequestration time period was increased to 7. We also observed that the likelihood of moving contaminated manure is lower when 11 birds are tested using 11 swab pool sample relative to a 5 swab pool sample. And also the likelihood of moving contaminated manure is higher under the slow spread scenario. This is because it takes longer to detect hypothea through testing under the slow spread scenarios. Here we present the results on the mean hypothea virus concentration in manure loads, which may be moved off the premises before detection. Similar to the likelihood, 
here we observe that the mean hepatitis virus concentration also decreases as the sequestration uh, time is increased from 0 to 10 days for example under the typical spread scenario and using a 11 spur uh, pool size the mean virus concentration decreases from 3.4 log ead 50 per gram with zero day sequestration to 1.4 ead 50 per gram uh, with a 10 day sequestration so to summarize longer sequestration periods reduce the likelihood of moving contaminated manure loads and the quantity of feces from hepatitis infected birds in a load that may be moved before detection active surveillance protocols with 11 swab pool samples had lower likelihood of moving contaminated manure relative to using a five swab pool and also the likelihood of moving contaminated manure was higher under the slow spread scenario compared with typical contact rate scenarios however as i had mentioned previously this is uh, not as much of a concern in the current outbreak the spread has been uh, very fast in some of the layer flocks that we had analyzed uh, through our uh, time of introduction analysis so to conclude sequestration storage in conjunction with active surveillance can significantly reduce the likelihood and quantity of hepatitis a uh, virus contaminated manure that is moved before detection the results were used to inform secure poultry supply permit guidance for moving sequestered manure to land application or off farm storage together with other applicable biosecurity measures this work has also raised the possibility of assessing risk using similar testing and time mitigation for movement of other poultry products of positive premises one of the issues identified in the current outbreak is management of eggs in a storage cooler on a hepatitis infected premises currently eggs present in storage on a hepatitis infected premises are composed composted or disposed in a landfill as part of the depopulation process however there are several categories there may be several categories of eggs in the storage cooler on a positive premises and the likelihood of contamination of these eggs depends on the source and timing of collection that is uh, for example the lowest risk category would be eggs from an infected premises and then uh, you have you may have eggs from test negative barn on an infected premises and also eggs laid by infected flocks several days before detection and finally uh, you have eggs laid by infected flocks close to the time of detection and this would have a higher likelihood of contamination and most likely these would be disposed we are seeking input on a future risk assessment for moving eggs from test negative barns that has segregated and stored on a hepatitis positive premises with appropriate mitigations the assessment would help evaluate the role of active surveillance and minimum storage time as potential mitigations the assessment would also address movement of eggs to for ultimately to further processing that is generation of liquid egg as well as other market channels finally i would like to acknowledge our uh, umn secure food system team that worked together on these risk assessments With that, I thank you, and we'll hand it over to Erin.